one of the things that makes the Smithsonian's collection so special is that Lincoln is often such a mythic character. And to try to bring this figure, this historic figure that really helped shape the country to life, I think our collection, these objects, do that in a way that other kinds of material just doesn't do it. One of my favorite objects is this iron wedge. This is a wedge that, in a sense, the rail splitter used to chop or split wood. There's a story that when this was found in the 1880s, they went around to people who knew Lincoln, and they talked to this one guy who remembers the day that Lincoln went into the blacksmith shop, and Lincoln asked the blacksmith to carve his initials into this iron wedge. And the blacksmith said, I'd love to do it, but I'm sorry, I'm no scholar. So Lincoln borrowed the tools and chiseled his own initials in the wedge. You know, there's other things that sort of show his personality, like this gold watch, which he acquired when he was in Springfield. Um, the thing is that everybody talks about Lincoln as not caring about his appearance, his clothes are ill-fitting, and here he has this fine gold watch that clearly he displayed as a symbol of his, his success as a lawyer. We have Abraham Lincoln's patent model. He's the only president who have ever holds a patent. This is a device that he developed while being a lawyer in Springfield to raise barges off of sand dunes. Um, it never went into production. It's just something that he sort of thought about as he was looking to find his place in history. We also have some wonderful campaign objects from the 1860 campaign. It's just a large wooden axe. And you can imagine, here is the rail splitter candidate, you know, the, the candidate of the common man, and hundreds of these people marching down, you know, the streets of Chicago or Springfield, carrying these large wooden axes in a torchlight parade. What we most remember Lincoln for is the Emancipation Proclamation. And one of the things we have in our collection is the inkstand from the telegraph office on which Lincoln drafted the Emancipation Proclamation. Lincoln used to hang out at the War Department telegraph office. Almost every day he would go. This inkstand is from a major whose desk Lincoln used to borrow when he would go there. And according to this Major Eckert story, he remembers Lincoln coming in in the summer of 1862 and quietly working on his desk. And he didn't want to intrude on Lincoln, but one day he asked Lincoln what was he working on. And Lincoln says, I'm working on a document to free the slaves. We have these casts of Lincoln's face and hands, which were made in the 1860, just at the time in which he was nominated as a Republican candidate for president. And these happened to be the casts that were owned and saved by the actual artist. There's a story that when the artist went down to Springfield to cast Lincoln's hands, his right hand was swollen from shaking so many people who congratulated him for getting the presidential nomination, that the artist asked him to hold something in his hand to steady it in the mold. Lincoln goes out to his back porch, cuts a piece of broomstick, and holds it in the mold. And the artist saved that piece of broomstick, and that's in our original cast. And then we have you know, those things that mark another phase of Lincoln's life. We have the last cup that Lincoln uh, used um, before going to Ford's Theater. This was supposed to be, as we all know, the night of relaxation. When news came to the White House that Lincoln had been shot, one of the servants noticed this coffee cup sitting on a windowsill, left behind by Lincoln. And they preserve it, and eventually they give it to um, Robert Todd Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son, and the Lincoln family gives it to us. We have the blood-stained cuff of Laura Keene. She was the star actress of the play that he went to see when, after Lincoln was shot, someone in the crowd said, bring the president water. The actress goes, gets a pitcher of water in a cup and brings this up to Lincoln and cradles his head in her arm, and blood drips on her cuff, a cuff which she saves to remember that moment. And, and finally, you know, in a sense, what starts the entire Smithsonian collection full of Abraham Lincoln material is this top hat. We don't know very much about the hat. We know that it was acquired 
by Lincoln when he was in Washington. It's made by a Washington hat maker. We don't know when he acquired it, but we know that the last time he wore it was to go to Ford's Theater. And he sets it next to his chair, where days later the military recovers it, trying to preserve the, the scene of the crime, and transfers it to the Department of Interior that transfers it to the Smithsonian Institution.